get this thing start. What the heck happened? Your video is. What are you doing? I don't know. Hello, it is me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and I am here with my recurring guest, Chris Dufour, who may be coming to visit this summer, and then we'll do some more videos live from this basement. Live from Grandma's chair. <laughs> That's right. But today, what we are going to do is we're going to go, we're going to go through our top five all-time favorite baseball movies. We're going to go in reverse order from five to one. It's going to be impossible. Well, it is. It is impossible because, as Chris was just telling me before we came on, he likes every baseball movie that has ever been made. I like to see the good in things. <laughs> yes. I mean, you got baseball, you got me. Right. That's pretty much it. So I think what we'll do is we'll go five to one, and then we'll talk about movies that maybe didn't make our list, but we wish could have made that top. I don't even, yeah, man, I don't know. This is going to be tough. Yeah. All right, you start, you're going to have to start. Okay, I'm going to start with my number five all-time baseball movie, and that is A League of Their Own. Ooh. <laughs> Crying? There's no crying in baseball. Ooh. Talk so about what, do you th what do you think about that? You like that movie? <laughs> I do. Well, of course I do. I, I I'm a huge Tom Hanks fan, and I thought he was hilarious in that. In that. I thought you know what's great about A League of Their Own is until it came out, I had no idea of that story. You know, I right. we're the age of the generation where. We didn't really know that story. And I, I'm sure one of the big draws for me for Leo Their Own is you and I went to see that together in Endicott, if you remember correctly, uh, when it was in a theater. Remember that basement theater we went to? And we oh, right, out? right, yeah. right. That was a great day. So I, I'm a little sentimental <clears throat> about that because uh, you and I got to share that experience together. But the music was good. Tom Hanks was amazing. Madonna was funny. Rosie was back before she was really super annoying. She was funny. Yeah. I thought John Lovitz was hilarious. John Lovitz yeah. is always funny in every movie. Was, Bill Pullman was in that. I mean, man, I, I the, 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 uh, David Stratum, who was a Williams grad, mm. Williams College grad, was in that. I mean, he's in so many. He was also Eddie Sicotti in uh, Eight Men Out. So. Oh, right, right, yeah. right. I so, remember. Uh, he was... Uh, what was he? He was like a, a Wrigley executive. He was like a Her yeah, was like a Hershey bar kind of exec. That was yeah, that the yeah. guy, like Gary Marshall, who owned the company, told him to run the women's baseball league. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's such a well done movie. Well yeah. done. I mean, I, I don't know if it's on my list, but I love it. I can tell you that. I don't even know. I'm still working on my list. You're still <laughs> working on your list, man. I don't even know how to call this thing to five. I got like 25. I got to get into five, man. How does that even work? Yeah. Now, I will say that my five, my top five, I will say they were very close. Like, you almost could, they could almost all of them, oh, I'd say almost all of them, maybe not a league of their own, but most of them could be interchangeable with the ones above them. So. That's ridiculous. All right, I'm going to go. This is my wild card. I love this movie. And uh, I'm, it's not on a lot of lists that I've ever seen in my life. Uh, uh, so this is one of my... But this movie, every time I want to feel good and feel good about baseball and just get a laugh, I watch Little Big League. Oh, my God. Do I love that movie. Jonathan Silverman's hilarious in it. Dude from Gilmore Girls is hilarious in it. Mm -hmm. What's his name? David? Is it Patterson? Scott Patterson, maybe? Uh, you know, it's one of, uh, you know, the, the late great, uh, who played the grandpa? I love him so much. Such a great actor. Oh, uh, Jason Robards. Jason Robards. Yeah. Jason Robards. And then, uh, man, 
I don't know. Oh, and of course, the big guy who was in Field of Dreams, uh, and I'm thirty something back. Gary Gary Busfield, Tim Timothy Busfield. Timothy he plays the first baseman that uh, the little kid's mom falls in love with, or vice versa, or whatever. Mm-hmm. I love that movie. And then Griffey's in it, and Johnson, Randy Johnson's in it. I mean, yeah. Kevin Elster, I guess, is their shortstop, if I remember correctly. It came out in '94. We were in Texas. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I think he plays the twin shortstop in that movie. Oh, man. I mean, that's a classic. I love everything about that movie because it's all—it's always been our dream, right? Since we were eleven. Hey, we, I'd like to manage our major league team. We could do it. Yeah. Night nurses from Jersey. Who can forget nice ner- night nurses from Jersey? Right. You remember that scene? Yeah. Thirteen times he ordered it from the hotel room. His mom's like thirteen times. Might have been more than that. I, I can't remember exactly. He falls asleep in the dugout at Fenway, of all places. Mm-hmm. I love that movie. So I'm going to put that one at five. Love that movie. Everything about it. All right. So you want to do? You want to lead with your number four? No, no. You go. I'm st- uh, that way. I can think a little bit more. Okay. All right. Well, number four on my list is The Natural. Ooh. I love that movie. The Natural. Let's talk about the natural. It was an awesome movie. That's, that. that's insight is brilliant. That's why people come to your channel. Just for that that insight. Hey, hey, the guys are doing a top five best baseball movies of all time. Bob yeah, says the, nat- Robert, the natural. Robert Redford awesome. and uh, and uh, what, what was his name? Something Brimley. Wilford Brimley. <laughs> no, the, the the one the line that gives me chills still is. Uh, when they're in the locker room before that last game and Pop and Red are shaving. And uh, he says, uh, should have been a farmer. My mom wanted me to be a farmer. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. And then all of a sudden there's Redford and he's like, my dad wanted me to be a baseball player. Well, yeah. you're the best goddamn hitter I've ever seen. Yeah. And I'm like, that. I love that line. Suit up. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. I love it. And what he, says, and what he says tomorrow movie. at batting practice, be here. And he hey, said, I have, I have been every, every day. day. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful movie. Beautiful movie. Yeah. Love it. It's, a, it's the, you know, there's some romance and mystery and magic in the movies. And that, that one captured the magic, I think, baseball. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. All right, number four for me. I mean, the next four could all be completely rearranged, except maybe one. I, I mean, one I think is going to be has always been my one. I, I just can't move it up. But uh, four, three, and two could be interchangeable as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. But uh, I love, again, I'm going a little off the, the plate here, but, man, I love for love of the game. Love it. Costner's in, uh, up and down my list with his movies, man. I love For Love of the Game. I love, because I, I guess I'm just a little bit more sentimental. You know what I mean? Like, I love, yeah. but that movie to me, him, you know, the whole thing with him. Is he going to retire? Is he going to go to the Giants? Is he going to get back together? With Kelly? First of all, Kelly Preston, who I adore, or I did adore and still do, yeah. but great actress. Uh, I thought she was wonderful, and the whole relationship he builds with her, her daughter, and and it's in the middle of this. And Vince Scully calling the game with Steve Lyons of all people, which is just unbelievably hysterical. Mm-hmm. And the characters they make, you know, the way they wove that story throughout the nine innings, I just thought it was beautiful. And John C. Riley as a catcher, if there was any actor who was ever just like born to play one of those. Back up 232 hidden catchers that somehow hang in the major leagues. It was John C. Riley. He yeah. nailed that. Yeah, he, he was. He was real good in that. He nailed that part. I, I I just really, I know a lot of people say, you know, again, I got two movies on my list already. Uh, you know, I think the, the uh, crowd, if you will, would, would not agree with, but uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to, I'm going to be a little sentimental. So I'm going with, uh, for love of the game. Number four. All right. 
All right, and moving on to number three for me is Field of Dreams. For all the years, Ray, it's been baseball. America's rolled by like an army of steamrollers. It's been erased like a blackboard, rebuilt and erased again. But baseball has marked the time. Field of Dreams. Wow. What a movie. Yeah. If you build it, he will come. Again, just a just a fairy tale, but an incredibly beautiful fairy tale about fathers and sons and baseball and Yes, and both that movie and your uh, for the love of the game pick both had Kevin Costner. Yeah, and so there's another movie on my list coming up. So All right, come on up. Yeah. <laughs> Well, not not yet. We're not there for that one, but right. No, um, but uh, I mean, feel the dreams. What more can you say about it, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, you can nitpick and you know, I mean, but I thought you know, and first of all, any movie that has Fenway in it, it's gonna make my well, list, bro. There you go. Right. Yeah, uh, that. Absolutely. I. Uh, but I mean, I, I just say that, that there's a movie now that just came to my mind. I'm gonna. I'm interested to see if it's on your list. The town. We'll go. Well, let's just talk about field. The town's not on my list. I don't consider it a baseball movie. The town. Yeah, remember that robbery heist movie based in Massachusetts, where the climatic scenes where they're trying to rob Fenway Park. Oh no, no, I wasn't thinking that. I thought maybe you're trying to throw that in here, and I'm like, nah, no, that doesn't count. No. Uh, so we're going to talk more about Field of Dreams, or is, are we done? James Earl Jones, Timothy Buffield, Kevin Costner, Amy Madigan. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, all time. Ray class. Liotta. Let's not forget the late great Ray Liotta. Yes, Ray Liotta. incorrectly, but what can you yeah. do? <laughs> it's a testament. God wanted to play with us, but we hated the guy when he was alive, so we told him to stick it. We told him to stick it. I love that line. I love that line. I love Amy Madigan's character too. When they go to the school and they're talking about burning books, and she gets all fired up and gives that speech. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love. Uh, I love Doc. What was his? What was the name of Doc? Doc. Uh, Doc Graham. Right, right. Moonlight Graham. Moonlight Doc. Moonlight Graham. I love that piece of the story. And when Costner's walking down the street, McGraw, McGraw all of a pointed a bony finger at me and said, "Right field." <laughs> right field. How could you come that close to your dream and and not be, you know, not let it affect the rest of your life? It would have been a tragedy if I didn't get to be a doctor. Yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah, that great. And I love it when that lady in the town looks at uh, uh, James, James Earl Jones' character. What was his name? Uh, what was the character's name? The writer, Terrence Mann. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and she goes, "You're a good writer." <laughs> oh no, he says to her, "You're a good writer." She looks at him. She goes, "You are too." <laughs> I love that line. That was a good one. Yeah, Field of Dreams, man. How could you not have it on there, right? Exactly. So, what's your number three? I'll tell you what I'm going to do here for number three. I'm going to go, eh, and again, interchangeable with two, but I'm going to go with 42. 42. Yeah. Love it. 42. I thought yeah. that was a good modern move, a story about Jackie Robinson. And and again, probably making my list because just the story is so important. And I it told, it, you know, and hopefully it reached a whole new generation of what Jackie Robinson had to go through to right. get to break the color barrier. You know, even granted that Larry Doby would have done it two months later, maybe if Jackie hadn't, but who knows what, what history would have saw if Jackie didn't get get through what he got through and the courage that it took to do that. And, you know, I mean, obviously the acting was great. Uh, Chadwick Boseman, the late great Chadwick Boseman and Harrison Ford, I believe was Branch Rickey. And Oh yes, he was. I mean, I thought I just, I mean, that story is so important and Jackie Robinson and Larry Doby and those guys are also important to what the fabric of baseball became, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, and I just thought it was well acted and 
it's such a great i mean you can't hardly screw it up it's, it's a great real life story true story so i mean what are you going to do with it you know right. <laughs> but the acting was great and i i enjoyed it i enjoyed that movie i mean i want to cheat a little bit and it, it almost put but I, i'm not going to because i know you want to stick to five so but we're going to talk a little bit about some of the movies that did make my oh well five. sure yeah we'll do that after we get to number one yeah some of the i mean yeah go ahead you're a two well, yeah, I'm I'm up at number two. And for number two, this should not come as any surprise to you. I'm going with eight men out. Knowing you, that's not a surprise. <laughs> it's not a surprise. <laughs> but, but, I mean, I love that movie. John Sayles did that. Another Williams College guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he directed that, that movie. Yeah, and a lot great. of stars in it. That's John Cusack's in it. Yeah. Charlie yeah. Sheen's in it. Yeah. Uh, so many great actors are in it. And again, a true story. Yeah. And they, I thought they made it compelling. I mean, the, I mean, I'm absolutely, I, I can't watch that movie and not cry for uh, Cusack's character. What was his name? The third baseman. Um. Yeah. Buck, Buck Weaver. Weaver. Buck yeah. Weaver. Buck Weaver. Yeah. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Yeah. And then that breaks my heart even more than the Joe Jackson part. Now, I want to, and I just want to point out as, an, as a, an aside here, I have read a lot of stuff and I've heard from a lot of, you know, people, historians, people who said they know the situation or they know more about. Dude, the I've never, you've never mentioned to me this in your life. You don't hang out with historians. No, I mean, but like, you know, on you're watching YouTube, reading. All right, things, all right. I'm like, dude, people, you don't even have a cup of coffee with a story. I'm the closest you've come to having a cup of coffee with a story. Okay. So there are people. Who Let's just be real to your viewers. That a lot of the, a lot of what went on in Eight Men Out was inaccurate. There are a lot of people who say that Comiskey paid his players very well for the time. Mm. There are people who say that the White Sox weren't quite as good as the Reds and would have lost anyway. No one in their right mind would bet against the Chicago White Sox. Right? Right. That is true. I mean, I don't know who you're... I mean, my, my wife always tells me, well, cite your source. What Are you on uh, crazy8s.com or are you on some legitimate website reading these things? Because I, I just... I only say that because I've never heard anybody say in anything I've read that the Reds were close to the equals of that White Sox team. I've never seen that. You don't think so? From any legitimate source that I consider legitimate. Excuse me. I mean, I'm not talking about bazooka gum, you know. Right. right. So, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, how could we possibly know how accurate that is? We didn't live then. Well, that's, I mean, that's true. But, but uh, as a movie, compelling. Hey, yo, definitely as a movie, it's excellent. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, number two for me? Yeah, number two for or you. Or did you want to talk more about uh, Amen Out? No, no, I'm good. I'm. I've said my piece and about Arnold it. Rothstein. Ah, uh, yes. yes. That was part of it. That also there was there is some dispute about his role and the other guys' roles and right. Stuff like that. There's yeah. some dispute about that. That I've read. But as far as if the Reds were going to beat the White Sox on an equal playing field, I never I've never heard that before. Those White Sox were damn good. Well, they were. That's I mean, true. Lefty Williams and Eddie Cicotte play pitch like they. Have normally pitch White Sox wipe up the Reds. I mean, again, listen, I wasn't even, I was 50 years away from being born, so what do I know? Right. right. But right. It certainly looks that way. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what are we moving, so what are we moving on to my number two? Your number two. My number two. It's just a great, great baseball movie. Just pure, beautiful, if it if you don't love baseball after you watch this movie or at least understand it, I don't know. You're probably never gonna do it. But Bull Durham is my number two. And Bull Durham. Oh yeah, I'm having a blast. Thanks. Good. God, the sucker teed off in that like he knew I was gonna throw a fastball. He did know. Ah. I told him. Bull Durham. I love did that movie. Durham. Another Costner flick, you know. I mean, you know, Kevin Costner is going to go down as a legend to me. <laughs> and I don't even watch Yellowstone. So he, he was a legend way before that. 
But uh, I don't get it. It's like he knew what was coming. He did. I, how did he I know? Told I told him. <laughs> We're dealing with a lot of stuff here. We got a uh, candlesticks make a good make a good gift. I thought Susan Saran was awesome. Tim Robbins was awesome, obviously. Yeah, Susan Saran was, was awesome. Good. Costner was awesome. But the bit Larry Miller was awesome as the pitching coach. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or was that that was Robert Rule, not Larry Miller. Yeah, Robert, Robert Rule, I think. Um sorry, Robert. Uh yeah. Just such a great, great I mean, it nailed minor league baseball to a T, I thought. Yeah. And the, and also it nailed the dream of playing in the major leagues, you know, and mm -hmm. what it is to – the romance of baseball was in that movie too. It's just a beautiful love story mm -hmm. to baseball, really, about people trying to make it in baseball and, you know, the hardships of it. You know, it's not all – obviously it is once you get to the big leagues and even more so now because that movie was made in – I want was that movie in eighty six? Yeah, in the eighties sometime. Yeah. So I think it was eighty six, but uh, maybe eighty. But yeah, I mean the eighties were great for baseball movies. I'll tell you that much. We were in the right place at the right time, you and I. Yeah. But Durham, that was a great movie. Great movie. Mm -hmm. Pitch, you got to pitch through your eyelids. <laughs> yeah. You got to, yeah. Take it one day at a time. Kevin Costner creating a rain out. I mean, it's all gold. It's mm -hmm. all gold. The fist, you don't punch with your pitching hand. All gold. <laughs> and plus they had a, you know, they had such great characters in that movie. I loved it. Yeah. And real, but that was a, a real movie, I thought. A real it was a love story between three people, kind of with you know, but it was also just a real movie that was close to minor league baseball, you know. Right. Close to, I mean, I've been around it enough to tell a little bit about it anyway. Mm. Pretty close. Yeah. All right, number one. Number one for you, Big Timer. Number one on Sportsman Z's list is Major League. Ball four. Ball eight. Low and Vaughn has walked the bases loaded on 12 straight pitches. Ooh, Major League is number one. Loved Major League. Absolutely. Wow. Major League is one of those movies. This is, this is how I gauge a great movie. I could watch Major League a hundred times. Like, I would not get bored watching that movie. But The problem is, with that statement, for me, there's about 20 baseball movies I could do that every single one. Yeah. I don't get bored of baseball movies. Yeah. Never. Never. I mean, I'm sure there's a couple, but not, not the ones I'm currently staring at. Yeah. Major League... I was just Major League, such a great movie. I was just quoting it to my students today, because mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know we were at the we had a softball double header, and the uh, kid hits the ball, and I'm like, too high, too high, yeah, too high. <laughs> and everyone's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, it's too high. <laughs> and so I said, and they're like, and I'm like, does anyone know what movie that's from? And of course, they're 20 years old; they don't know. But so one one guy did. One guy got. Love that movie. Too high, oh, man. Yeah. What do you mean too high? If the yeah. ball is too high, it wasn't going to go. <laughs> yeah, that was a great movie. I love that. I mean, Willie Mays Hayes. Yeah. You you run like you <laughs> made, but you hit like shit. Oh, can I say that on your show? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. I can, well, bleep me out. Anyway, hilarious. I mean, listen, that manager who put, I can't remember the actor who played him, but, uh, yeah, but yeah, Lou Brown. Lou Brown, man. Lou Brown. Give me a second. Can I get back <laughs> to you on that when they offer him the job? Can I get back? I wish to you? we. I wish we'd had these guys ten years ago. We did. <laughs> <laughs> so many great and Bob Euchre, of course. Just yeah, yeah. A bit yeah outside. just a little bit outside. Just a bit outside. I mean, that's. I mean, these <laughs> things are iconic now. It's crazy. Again, by the way, another eighties movie. So. <laughs> And that ball is going to need a visa. <laughs> <laughs> well, we already talked about number one for my move. My number one movie is The Natural. The Always Natural. All right. In the summer of 85, when it got released on HBO, I think I watched it every day because they would show it every day, twice a day. And I would watch it every day. I know every single 
second of that movie. I love that movie. And uh, well, that was the that was the only movie that both of us had in our top five. Yeah, that's right. All the other ones differ. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of the ones, and we'll talk about this in a minute. But a lot of the ones that didn't quite make my top five were on, were on your list. Were were on my list. They just weren't in my top five. You know? Yeah. And, and yeah. some of these movies, it's heartbreaking that they're not on there. I can't wait to talk about them. But yeah, I mean, one of my favorite scenes in The Natural is when uh, he's at that carnival riding the train at the beginning with the whammer, and he strikes mm. out the whammer. Right. Right. Love that scene. Love that scene. I I'll be honest with you. Uh, and I haven't said this too often, but the the, the whole uh, Basinger part of it made me a little uneasy. You know, I mean, it was integral to the plot, obviously, because uh, somehow he he has to f fail, and it's her fault, you know, basically as being a distraction. But yeah, I was a little uncomfortable with that part of the movie. I, I really wanted to get past that and get back to the baseball <laughs> yeah. when when Red and Pop were on and. Uh, you know, and they were playing ball, and Bump Bailey goes through the wall and everything. I mean, it's definitely, if you look at it, you'll be like, well, that's, I mean, I can see where people will say it's over the top, but to me, it's it's not. But I, I understand people that say it's a little bit maybe over the top with, uh, with the lights and the, mm -hmm. and the the ball. That's not a ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not a ball. Right. Hit the, hit the cover off the ball, Roy. Yeah. Or when he hits that uh, homer in Chicago and breaks the clock, mm -hmm. glass flying everywhere. You know, I watched The Natural maybe just 10 days ago. Mm -hmm. and my, this is my thought when I saw that scene. Oh, my God, the people in the stands underneath that clock must have died. <laughs> All that glass landed on their heads. And I'm like, I never thought about that, but this is the first time I ever had that thought about The Natural. I'm like, those poor people underneath that glass. <laughs> what happened? Love it. So that's it. All right, yeah, that's the top five. So now Man, some of the some of the movies that we didn't that didn't get in for any for either of us, like Pride of the Yankees with uh, the Lou Gehrig story. Yeah, the Lou Gehrig story. Man, I love, love that it. movie so much. Yeah. I couldn't believe I couldn't fit in my top five. Right. I mean, I I thought Gary Cooper was awesome in that movie, and you know it's one of my earliest memories is watching that movie on WPIX. Like right, was, and Babe Ruth was actually in the movie. Babe Ruth was in the movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was that was a, I love that movie. Probably I can I have it on DVD, man. I mean, I don't even have a DVD player anymore, but I have that movie on DVD. Mm, right, right. I love it. I I just I I'll go back when I when I did have a DVD player, I go back and watch Pride of the Yankees all the time. And it used to and be how, so about, much... uh, how about another movie with, that's just a number, 61? I was just, That's next on my list to mention. I thought, you know, it's funny to me that more people don't put 61 up higher on their list. I, I mean, again, I haven't looked at lists in a while, but 61 was a beautiful movie. I mean, it was, uh, yes. it was just – the cinematography was great, number one. But number two, the uh, – I thought the story of, of the guys was just compelling as hell. You know, and, uh, man, I mean, of course, I kind of knew somewhat of the story. And, of course, that's a movie, so blah, blah, blah. But Billy Crystal, I mean, you know, first of all, Billy, no one loves Mickey Mantle as much as Billy Crystal, probably, mm -hmm. number one. So you knew he was going to put his all into this movie, and I thought he had all run with it. I thought yeah, I thought it was just a wonderful movie. I enjoyed it completely. Here's, a, here's another one. This one's a little sadder. Uh, but banging the drum slowly is another. Yep, it's almost Bang transcends baseball. Yeah. It's such a classic story. But I just thought uh, De Niro and uh, Voight. Uh, I think it's De Niro and Voight are in that. Uh, I mean, just a brilliant film. Yeah, there's a, a such a great story about bonding and. Uh, but think about think about the comedies we're not mentioning either, like Rookie of the Year. <laughs> right. I thoroughly enjoyed Rookie of the Year. You know, that was to me that was a. A perfectly good baseball movie, not as good as, uh, you know, not as good as uh, as Little Big League to me. I just love Little Big League, but I mean, and there's another one is uh, Big how about, Along and Charlie how about, All Stars. Love how that about, movie. <laughs> being a Red Sox fan, what about Fear Strikes Out? I have Fear Strikes Out on my list here too. Yep, the Jimmy Purcell story. I mean. 
What about you? What are some of the other ones that didn't make your top five? Um, <clears throat> really, it was it was for the love of the game, and then uh, the game. Bear strikes out um, sixty one, and uh, <clears throat> and um, how about uh, Angels in the outfield? I didn't like Angels in the outfield. I didn't. I didn't hate it because obviously it had baseball in it. And that's all. Like I said, that's all I need. Yeah. But uh, it wasn't my favorite movie. But I did like. I did like Tony Danza in it. You know. But I, you know, another movie we didn't mention was the Rookie, the Jim, Mo the story about Jim Morris. Right. That and, a, and another one I can't believe we haven't even talked about. Not even. I can't believe it. People are. You know. People are going to be like, "Are you crazy for not including this?" The Bad News Bears, the original. Yeah, the Bad News Bears. And also, another one, dude. And see what I mean? I mean, it's crazy, mm -hmm. but think about this. We didn't... I mean, honestly, if there's a if there's a six for me, if it's not Pride of the Yankees, or Eight Men Out, because I didn't have Eight Men Out, didn't make my top five, then, it, then it's got to be The Sandlot. I love The Sandlot. The Sandlot was good, yeah. That was such a great baseball movie about... Yeah. Again, about friendship and, and being young and playing ball and, I mean, yeah. Wendy Peppercorn. I mean, it was... Right, right. And that's what it is, man. That's what baseball is. It was... It's getting, I mean, that's what we did when you, you and I were kids. Is think about our childhood memories, man. It's about going down to Duke Stadium and playing ball, right? And what was uh, another Red Sox movie? What was the one with uh, Jimmy Fallon in it? Yeah, Fallon and Barrymore. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't remember what the title of that what was. What was that called? Uh, yeah, I see it now. I see it. Uh, it's going to come to me. That was a, that was a fun movie. But yeah, again, I, not, I, a lot of these would be ahead of me on that list. I did Obviously, you're going to make a movie about the Red Sox. I'm going to love it, right? I mean, 2004 Red Sox. What's not to love? They want to, they they had to change together, they that get movie together the before the season. The they decide who gets to go to what game with them. And oh, I love it when they were picking the tickets. Oh my god, do a dance, do it, do a dance. What was the name of that? Everybody, movie? everybody wanted to go to the Yankees game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they all wanted the Yankees Red Sox game. What was the name of that though? I I don't remember. I can't remember. Come on, what was it? We can think of it. Shoot. That's funny. You know what's funny is uh, Jimmy Fallon met his wife on that movie. Really? Shooting that movie, yeah. She was an assistant producer or something. Huh. Uh, so was it? Uh, what was it? Yeah, I think we. I think we did. Oh, and we didn't even mention Moneyball either, which is I'm sure Money, on somebody. Moneyball. Yeah. Man. Moneyball was a good movie. I thought. You know, I, I mean, I thought when they first said they were making a movie out of Moneyball, I was like, well, well, how are you going to possibly make that interesting? But uh, yeah, they did. I mean, that was a, I thought Brad Pitt was awesome. Obviously, Jonah Hill was awesome, too. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It's uh, that should you know, that's another one that needs to be. Fever Pitch was the name of that Fallon movie. All right. Right. Fever Pitch. Fever Pitch. Yeah. yeah. Just Yep. I mean, man, so many, we, we've been alive for some great baseball movies. Very lucky. Very good time for baseball movies. That's, I'm going to wrap it up. That's there. the fastest three minutes in the history of planet, dude. Yeah, you said well, we had three yeah, minutes and then like 13 <laughs> seconds later, you're like, we're done. What are you talking about? <laughs> we're done. <laughs> That's it. So much for that three minutes. That is going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing up. Peace.